Wow, this is an all-important question. I like this question, boy, boy, boy. <clears throat> yeah, 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 yeah. I better answer this one right. Oh my God. Um, is it true that? Hi, everyone. Hi, you guys, ladies and gentlemen. I understand you guys have some questions for me. You want curious about me, in my life, in my my do's and don'ts, and my wills and won'ts, and my pre preferences, I should say. Uh, so I'm going to answer some of the questions that you've proposed to me and uh, give you a little more insight as to who I am as Jonathan Moffat, not just the drummer. Um, Jonathan Moffat, the person, and some of my particulars of things that uh, please me, displease me sometimes, or um, that you're curious about. So here we go. We're going to answer some things. Hit me with it. What is my favorite song to perform? And that is one of the most difficult questions that could ever be asked. Because there's so many favorite songs. I love performing. I love playing any song, For the first of all. Number two is that I work with so many major artists with incredible music. It's hard to decide. Of course, many of Michael Jackson's songs, it's impossible to decide on one. Elton John, Madonna songs. I work on a lot of our songs on the record. So I'm, um, I'm really, um, really confused as which one to choose. You know, work with George Michael. Uh, cameo, funk. I love funk music, so I love a lot of the songs with Cameo. Very difficult to decide that. I have to give you a laundry list of songs, so that's a one too hard to decide to answer right now. I can give you a list of some of the songs, that, but I uh, can't give you one specific song. Sorry about that. <laughs> I love music. Bass guitar or electric guitar? Let me see. Well, in the beginning, when I was uh, six years old, my father asked me to play music while playing music, and I wanted to be a bass player, uh, of all things. And uh, my older, two older brothers, they were older than I, so they got first choice, and one of them decided on bass guitar, so I kind of got stuck with drums. But I've always loved bass guitar because of the foundation at the bottom end, and it makes it full and stuff, and just the patterns of the bass. So I would have to say bass guitar. Even though I love guitar and I just bought a guitar, so I'm going to be learning that as well because my other brother played guitar. So I love them both, but I'm leaning toward bass guitar. It's the partnership with the, with the drums. That was a little more easier. Favorite Michael Jackson video. Um, like most people, I, I really think that Smooth Criminal was, was his most amazing video. Um, just the, the set design, the choreography was just remarkable. And the theme of it and had great, great participation from the the uh, background people, the, the extras, they did excellent job in their parts in it. It was staged incredibly so. It was lit very, very well and very mysterious for the theme of the song. And Michael's impeccable performance, you know, so sharp and so precision in his moves and choreography of them was just impeccable. And I think it was the best video that I've ever seen of any video pretty much, you know. I think that's his best, and if not the best, one of the very best videos I've ever seen, still to this day. That's another difficult question. There's not one single drummer that is my favorite. There's so many drummers that are incredible at certain specific things they've studied and they practice and become a perfectionist at. So uh, some drummers are incredible with their hand mixtures and, and the techniques and speed, and some of them incredible with their foot techniques and speed. Uh, and then some drummers, a lot of drummers are, are incredible how they mix all of them up, all of them up but it all boils down to their personal expression. And there's a lot of drummers that uh, I enjoy listening to and watching their work, you know, and it's difficult. There's a great a gamut of uh, uh, people my age and people, the young, new generations, the new breed, uh, and it's just phenomenal drummers. It's hard to say about one particular one as it caught into the style um, of, uh, and of course, I love drummers that put feeling in what they do, not just the technical aspects of how fast and speed they do or how complex. If it doesn't feel good or doesn't emote feeling to me or to anyone, and then it's a science class. So I think music and drumming and rhythm is about making people feel something and move. <laughs> uh, that's another one that's very, very difficult. It's not a one single favorite Madonna song, but I'd have to say I love Get Into The Groove. I love Keep It Together. You know, um, I love Papa Don't Preach. It's a simple song, but I like it because it's, it's a really commercial track you know um there's a lot of songs of hers that are really really happening holiday i love holiday playing holiday uh there's a great number of her songs are magical hits and they hits in my heart and my um 
my desire to play and perform. But those are some of the ones. Uh, and like a prayer, I played on like a prayer, and as well as open your heart, I played on like open your heart on the record, those records. So um, I love playing those songs. So it was difficult, but that's the list of the ones that I can choose from right now off the top of my head. And there's others, I'm sure, but those are the ones that stand out to me. Of course, Michael Jackson would have to be it. His music is prolific. You know, um, it, it, it reaches the, the broad measure of people's hearts, souls, and minds. It's very um, well produced, all of this stuff. Um, the stuff. All the Michael um, stuff is, is just amazing from off the wall, thriller, you know, dangerous, you know, to everything that he's done um, since he's been solo. I'd have to say, especially the Off the Wall and the Thr a Thriller album, and the Dangerous album is remarkable as well. Invincible is great too, History is great, but those that Thriller and that Off the Wall album is, and Dangerous album, those three there, uh, just amazing songs, very amazing production. Um, so I would say that playing his music is my most favorite at this point. But although I love playing Elton John's rock and roll, I've always wanted to be a rock and roller now. I got to be a rock and roller with Elton John. And then Madonna's music is, is magical in its magical in its simplicity. Um, I've been lucky with George Michael, same thing, very musical. I, my favorite music is, is funk music, so Cameo. I've been with Cameo 36 years. I'm still with Cameo to this day, and I enjoy very, very much playing Cameo grooves and music, and especially Larry Blackman's um, his uh, di dictation of drum beats is just magical to play. He's one of the most prolific drummers that's not talked about that much today, but he still stands out as an innovator and a um, creator of uh, concepts of drum, uh, drum performances. And I still, to this day, enjoy playing his work and working with the band, one of the most prolific bands in the industry. Um, there's a lot of artists that I work with, but I'd have to say Michael is the one. Absolutely not. <laughs> no. I took snare drum in um, elementary school and junior high school and only the 10th grade of senior high school and the school high school bands and uh, the elementary school bands and the uh, junior high school bands. And I worked my way up to first chair reading snare drum music, but there was nobody in my neighborhood that played drums that could teach me music. So I didn't have anybody to teach me drum kit. I had to figure that out totally all on my own through the desire to be like the people that I heard on the records and inspired me to play drums since I was a drummer and listen to what they were doing. And I just became a copy machine. I could listen to what they were doing. I, I processed it through my brain, my heart, my spirit. Then I emulated what they were doing. When I hear the hi-hat, I knew what it was doing with the right hand because I'm right-handed. I heard the snare, I knew what he was doing and figured it out with the, the left hand. And I heard the bass drum, of course, with the right foot and the hi-hat opening and closing on the left foot. And it was just a science for me to figure out how to manipulate those things and make them happen when they happen with each limb. And so I, had teach, I taught myself throughout the years of my growing years. Oh yeah, Michael was really funny a lot of times. You know, even he's had an infectious laugh. So, you know, anybody said anything funny, he would laugh and then everybody would laugh at his laugh. So, but he was funny, you know, he asked a certain time, he asked questions that was pretty, pretty funny, but you know, he had this innocence about him, this childlike innocence and so, the 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 questions came off harmless, but it was so so innocent that we you know as adults were like wow he, you know he he's like uh, he's like open hearted and open spirited. Uh, Trump is not a musician and not in the music industry, so I I prefer to talk about things that's creative and in the music music industry with things I know I know some things about politics I know some worldly worldly uh, uh, matters and stuff like that, but I, those are personal things, and I think every one of you have your own personal feelings and and your um, personal decisions about uh, and opinions about people and, and people in office. Um, I think that's best kept left personal. I, as you notice, I never on my social media make political comments and or, or reply to political comments because I think it's personal. Um, so I'd rather not uh, say anything about one way or another about uh, Trump or anybody else. So. Um, I like to keep it private, you know, my own opinions. We um, will see how the world works out and that issue. Wow, this is an all-important question. I like this question, boy, boy, boy. <clears throat> yeah, 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 yeah. I better answer this one right. Oh my God. Um, is it true that drummers are the best lovers? Well, you know, let me tell you a little bit something. There's a lot of rhythm in these bones, baby. 
There's a lot of rhythm in these bones, baby. There's a lot of rhythm in these ligaments, baby. There's a lot of rhythm in these ligaments. There's a lot of rhythm in these muscles, baby. These muscles, you know, I'm say all over the thing, all over the body. There's a lot of rhythm in it, you know. A lot of rhythm in my mind and my spirit, baby. Let me tell you all about it. Let's start that problem number one. We're very emotional people. Drummers are very complex. You got to remember, we are not only perfect one part of our body, just uh, a hand, a uh, second hand to play keyboard, guitar, whatever. And um, we would perfect four, all four limbs as we're learning to play our instruments. So we got everything working, baby. We feel it all throughout our body and our system and our spirit and our soul. And we're rhythmic people, baby. Our heart beats in rhythm. Our brain works in rhythm to a cadence of a, a marching drum. You know, our minds clicks in rhythm. You know, it's on the click track of life. So when it comes to love, we apply all of those elements and look out, baby. These women are in trouble. I'm telling you right now. And you got to remember another thing. We're hot with energy. The drummer is the energy of the band. So, baby, you're like a band. We're going to play you in bed. <laughs> okay, I got a little hot hand right there. Now, uh, we're going <laughs> we're gonna to spell our name. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, no, we the drummer's got to be the best rhythm <laughs> lovers because our whole system is catered to rhythm and, and the body of rhythms. And everything has to do with the body, right? Drummers, everything has to do with the full-on body, and uh, there's there's a, a certain um, certain power in that, and a certain finesse. We know how to finesse that groove of love. <laughs> so I better shut up before I get myself in trouble. <laughs> but we love love. We love. Uh, I was gonna say making love. Well, okay. Well, we love making love because we're rhythmic people, and we love connecting to the rhythms of others. So I think. With all that we got going for us, all the control systems we got going for ourselves, we are the best lovers. And I might get some pushback from singers and guitar players and keyboard players, bass players, but I'm sorry, brothers. Um, you'd have to say that we got a lot of things chugging and we got it rolling. And the babies know it. The ladies know it. Just ask our women, our wives, our girlfriends, and then you'll give you a true answer. Did I go too far over the cliff? Okay. All right. Don't censor me. I think I backed up that off of the clip. That's the best answer ever. Absolutely. The question is, I'm a human drum machine. Every day I breathe life and everything I do is I'm a human drum machine. I hear rhythm all the time. I can't even turn it off. Why that is, I don't know. It's the gift that's uh, come from above, from heaven, um, being anointed. Um, but I'm like a jukebox. And even if you pull a chord out of the wall, it's still playing rhythms and, and songs and stuff. So, yes, I'm a, a human drum machine. When I play, my focus and concentration, first and foremost, is on the timing, perfection of timing between the kick, snare, and hat, you know, and every element in between, you know what I mean, and the times that work in. But, yes, I'm, I'm a human drum machine. And on top of that, the emotion and feeling affects the rhythm and the timing so those elements included in the equation of uh, drumming and and rhythm yes i am a human dr drum machine because first and foremost i think about the timing the feel and the swing hmm. what was my most embarrassing moment on stage i'd have to say one of the hardest things to overcome and I've dropped many sticks in my life and times. You know, many drummers have. They won't tell you. I'm going to tell you for them. They drop sticks, too. They, but I break a lot of sticks, too. Um, but my, I'd have to say the most difficult to come overcome for drummers on stage is not when your stick breaks and you swing and you get whoosh, just some air. You, it's not when your snare drum here and you hit it and it goes, duh, duh, or it goes, do, 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 do. You can hit on the rim or something else. It's when your bass drum head breaks. And your mallet gets stuck in the hole of the bass drum head, and you kick it, and it ain't nothing happening because the mallet's stuck in there. It won't make a sound. So all you got is a snare and a hi hat, and it sucks. It totally sucks thoroughly. And that's a very uh, embarrassing moment because that happened on a Michael gig, and it happened on a Madonna gig, and uh, my leg was real strong, and I just kicked it so hard. After two times, I could feel it getting weak in the middle of the show. You have very little or no time and to, to fix it and switch it out between songs and the flow of the show. And um, until it breaks, and then they'll stop the show for you once it breaks. But it was very embarrassing when the bass drum is not there. So I'd have to say a few times that happened to me when the bass drum 
I got busted. And my mallet was stuck in the head, and I couldn't play any beats at all with the bass drum for most of the song, if not half the song. That's very embarrassing for a drummer. I'd have to say absolutely not, not even from the beginning when I first started working with him. Michael was intuitive. He heard me play for the first time. He felt my spirit. He felt a kinship to me that through my spirit and my expression, my playing, that I knew what I was doing. My style befit him and his brother. So um, he trusted me. There wasn't a lot of directions. And from the very first show in Cleveland, Ohio, at one of the, the refurbished theaters downtown, there was two, uh, two next to each other. One, I think, was off him. I'm not sure which one it was, but I did my first show with him. When he saw and heard and felt that I was watching him and I was doing accents with him the first show ever, that I worked with him and I was voluntarily watching him and doing Foley, so to speak, movie accents with him on his dance move and, make, and making it look better and exciting. And he pulled me into his, his room at the hotel after that, called me into his room, and he told me nobody had ever done that with him before, and that how was I knowing when he was going to spin and make a stop? How would I know when he was going to throw his hand up in the air and hit something? How did I know when he was going to make a physical dance move and hit an accents with him? And I told him, Michael, I'm watching you the whole time. I can feel when you're going to do something. It's an intuitive thing. It's almost like midi or simpty hooked up to us in musical terms, a hook between us. And so he knew from that very first show that I knew what I was doing, and he trusted me. On all the tours, he never really directed me unless they worked out a specific dance move between him and the, choreo the other dancers, the choreography. Then he would have a directive thing. I want when we do this move and these multiple moves, can you hit something there? And that's basically what he would say. And he would demonstrate, bah, 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 bah. He would demonstrate, I, I got to get an idea from that, and I know what to do. Once I see it and I see it and I feel it a couple of times, I know exactly what to do. And he said, yes, that's it. So that's the only directions he ever given me as far as feel and um, power of hitting and all my stroke of hitting and timing. He's never given me any directions. It's been all on trust between he and I. Well, actually, if you want to call it a collaboration, I'd have to say it was an unspoken collaboration. He and I never sat down to work things out besides a few specific dance moves, but, but to intuitively over the whole course of the show and the tours, um, it was just chemistry that I could feel him. I have to feel him. He don't feel me. I have to feel him. I have to read him. Um, it was my, always my um, purpose and my uh, directive and my uh, intent to, to support the artist and the singer. So watching his dance moves and hearing his vocal inflections and expressions excited me to do some certain things on the drums. Yes, and that way he could taught, he taught me uh, by reading him, by feeling him, by watching him, and, and creating my own, so to speak, vo vo vocabulary of Foley and making it exciting for him uh, and exciting him in, in personally, giving him energy. Yeah, but that was something I was self-taught at. I taught myself that by watching him, and I learned from his dance moves, you know, and his vocals. That uh, yeah, in that way, yes, it taught me by watching him, by listening to him. But there was never a time we sat down that we, we he instructed me to do everything. It never happened. It was always intuitive. He hired me. He trusted in me. He let me do my thing my way, the way that he knew would would uh, fit his show and his style, because he trusted me. Because intuitively, he knew. I knew what he wanted, so that's why he wanted me. And um, I love, love wa watching him and listening to him, and it excites me. It makes me a creative person on the drums to give him the proper sounds that fits his dance moves and his vocals. <laughs> that's an interesting question. Uh, this question is that, where did my kung fu back crash symbols come from? My concept of doing the backlash Whiplash, I call it backlash, whiplash, um, back symbols, uh, catches, and um, and the way I played them. That actually interesting enough and funny enough. At a child at six years old on, where I used to like many kids my age and my era, read the comic books, DC comic books, and especially especially Marvel comic books. I was a fanatic, and I was also an artist. I draw the characters and stuff like that. So I would get into these, each individual character, and I see the superpowers they had, and the discipline they had, and I would get into that. And I, I always wanted to be a superhero, like the ones I read about, and inspired me in the comic books. 
So I said, on the drums, I wish I could be a superhero. I wish I had powers. If I was a drummer, and I am a drummer, if I had powers, what would they be? How could I use them? Of course, you think about, firstly, powering your arms and your legs and hit hard. I was already doing that because I felt music so intently and powerfully in my spirit. So I hit hard. But then I said, well, what else can a drummer do? And what, what other kind of powers and abilities can he have? And then it dawned on me one time I was just playing and playing and playing. And I said, wow, if I had powers, what if I can hit the symbol behind me and the symbol was placed behind me? And I can hit it and, and hit them, just hit them. That was where it started off. And hit them accurately and not miss. It's like I have eyes behind my back. So I thought about that and I start. I move my symbols from side to back. I start practicing that and getting it accurate and really cool. And so I got fluent at that, playing the symbols like that, hitting backward like that. Pow, pow. And double the hand. Bam, bam. So, uh, and uh, cross hand sometimes. Bam, bam. But then one day practicing, I was going through some fast element things and grooves and, and all of a sudden I went to hit a cymbal crash back there. And then I said, no, I don't want to do that. And I, I hit it, I caught it because I was trying to stop that, that idea. And it had an interesting sound. I said, whoa, that sounds really cool. And so I kept playing and then uh, until I, I started and I said, wow, that is really cool. And I stopped and then I started trying it, doing it on purpose. That was an accident the first time. Then I tried to do it on purpose. And I said, this could be a, a nice expression, a nice style, a unique style. It's like I got eyes in my back of my head so I can, I can see the symbols and know where they are and hit them and not only hit them, catch them accurately. So at 12 years old, I started that. That's when that accident happened and I started practicing it. First on the right hand side, and I got it pretty accurate. And I said, now what if I could do it with the left hand? Because I'm right handed. You have to build up your left left abilities to make them as, as equal as the right hand. So I started putting the symbols, I mean hitting the symbols on the left hand and catching them. Eventually I developed a vocabulary of different patterns to hit the symbols and catch them. And it hit them double hand and catch them both. So that's how it started. And that was at 12 years old, being a Marvel comic fanatic, you know, loving Marvel comics and the superheroes, mainly of loving the superheroes. And they had the powers that they had that Stan Lee and Jack Kirby and all the writers that had given them. And I wanted to be one so, so badly. So I applied that to my drums. And it's seeming like everybody likes it so much. It's seeming like I am a superhero at that aspect of drumming because um, I've done it so long and I have it very convincing and very natural for me and I'm very, very confident at doing them and without cutting my hands. So I started doing them back and behind and I started doing them to the side. I started hitting them ones around me. All of them I can hit and catch within the group. And that is my, my superpower, my Marvel Comics superpower I've developed over the years. Did Madonna ever hit on me? Yeah, she knocked the shit out of me one time. She punched me in my face and hit on me in my face. No, I'm just kidding. Me and Madonna, our relationship since 1985, she saw me on the Jackson's Victory Tour. She was in an audience at Dodger Stadium, and she said to her manager, Freddie DeMann at the time, she said, that's my drummer. That's my drummer. And she picked me and a couple other musicians from the Victory Tour band. And so in 85, he called, Freddie DeMann called me up and asked me to work with Madonna. But from 85 to 1990, we had a very professional career together. And... Um, we worked together very well, much like Michael. I could read her and her dance moves and, and things she de desired. Now, she's giving me more destruction than Michael on certain dance moves because she has a high choreography in the show. So we worked together on, on different things, and but a lot of it, I'd say 80% of it was me instinctively watching her and playing along with her dance moves and her vocals. But we kept it very professional. We didn't uh, get into all of that stuff. It's not good to mix business and pleasure. And I purposely kept it professional, and um, I wanted to keep it in a working relationship so I could work with her again. When you start getting complex in those kind of situations, then uh, it strains the relationship and uh, the work relationship. So, uh, no, we, it was very professional with us, and um, we had a working relationship for five years and produced a lot of great music and uh, live videos. <laughs> Have you ever thought about killing yourself? Man, where are you going with that? No way on earth, heaven or earth. It's not a point, a moment, a notion in my mind at any time in my entire life that it ever crossed my mind about taking my own life, my own gift, 
that as God has given me and given me and graced me with. Look at my life. Look what I've been able to do. Why would I think about that? And there's no situation that would make me even think about that. It's the furthest thing from my mind. The same as uh, as I get a, a cold sensor, like straight flat line. When I think about drugs, taking drugs or trying drugs, I get a flat line sensor. I have no sense in my spirit, my heart, my mind about trying it or knowing, wondering what it's like. Uh, curious curiosity. No, same thing with smoking. Same thing with drinking. Destructive things. I always wanted to reach my goals and my heights that I set high in my life, which I've been able to do because I've had clarity, clarity of mind. I've been able to keep myself healthy. You know, into my age right now, I'm 63 years old. It's going to 64 in a couple months, and I wanted to last through my the, my life to play drums as long as I could and keep my strength in my body and condition. So the same thing. Why would I ever think about that? I mean, there's some people are troubled, and yes, that happens, and unfortunately, it happens. And I pray for them, but to me personally, not a single time in all the seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, years of my life, decades that I ever ever thought about taking. The gift, precious gift that God has given me, and that my mother and father has granted me and given me to be able to do these things that I've been able to achieve and accomplish and enjoy in my life. You know, why would I even go there? That's always going to be on Michael, as long as he's dancing and doing his thing and exciting and thrilling the audience with his Billy Jean dance uh, routine at the end of Billy Jean. When it's just he and I, one on one, he's my dance partner. Like I tell everybody, we're just us together. I, that's on him. I watch him as long as he's dancing. I keep that beat going, continuous a pulse. And I excite him. I give him more energy. I hit harder. I keep the groove going. I put more emotion to excite him, to make him do more exciting and thrilling dance moves. So he controls that control. And when he's ready to end it, he will throw his hand up and he say, Billy Jean is not my lover. And then throw it down. And that's when the ending, boom, goes. So he's in command and in control on Billy Jean on the end of uh, the uh, Billy, for the end of Billy Jean on the victory tour. That's all on him. But it, I wouldn't call it a drum solo. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's a dance solo. But uh, Michael is in control. Yes. Michael and I had a conversation during the end of his rehearsals with uh, uh, This Is It. It's difficult to talk about sometimes. That's why I hesitate thinking about it. It was about maybe a week or less before the unfortunate happened. Um, he was talking to me on a break, and uh, personally, you know, I was sharing memories and about all the tours. A difficult question. Michael and I spoke the night before he passed away at the end of the rehearsal, about one, 30 at night we had just finished rehearsals and he came to me specifically smiling and laughing he's so excited he said everything sounds great everyone sounds great and he's very excited it's coming together really well we had just done our first run through of most of the set most of the show like 95 percent of the show or 90 percent of the show and it went well and he was very very excited and he told me he was excited. I'm so excited. Everything sounds great. It's going to be really great, huh, Foot? And I said, yeah, it really is going to be really great. He said, yes, I'm really excited. I can't wait to finish this run through. We ran out of time, but we'll pick it up tomorrow. And we'll start off with the song we left off on. But I, I loved everything. You, you sound amazing, Foot. You sound incredible, Foot. Thank you so much. And I say, well, thank you so much, Michael. I'm glad you still enjoy my work. He said, still enjoy your work. I've always enjoyed your work. And I love your playing. That's why you're here. That's why you're here. I love your playing. You did incredible, incredible job, you know. And I'm excited. And tomorrow we pick it up. And I can't wait to do the first show and, um, and, um, in London. He said, and I can't wait. So we'll be ready for tomorrow. Good job. And everybody, I love everybody. I love you, Foot. I love you, Foot. And I said, I love you too, Michael. And I gave him a hug not even knowing that was going to be the last hug I received from him or the last time I got to talk to him personally or at all or hear his voice in life. And I gave him a hug around 1.30 in the morning and we left each other. He said, I can't wait till tomorrow. I can't wait. I'll see you tomorrow, Foot. And that was his last words to me. And I said, okay, I'll see you tomorrow too. And I said, it should be great. And I walked off and went started to go to my car. I leave the building to go to my car and had no idea that uh, a few hours later, 
that we will lose him. So that was the last thing he expressed to me. And, um, and he and I exchanged a conversation. It was only hours um, before he passed away. So in a matter of nine to 12 hours from the time I hugged him last, and he said, I love you, Foot." I said, I love you, Michael. Uh, he said, thank you for everything. i see you tomorrow. I said, okay, i see you tomorrow. And I walked away not knowing. And um, we lost him. I, and we lost him. Within that matter of time, of 9 to 12 hours later. Um, not knowing not that I was prepared to go to rehearsal the next day. So that was the last thing he, he said to me. We, the exchange of of conversation we had in love and, and brotherhood, and brothership and brotherhood that we had, like family, we were family in both our hearts and spirits and mind. And um, I'll always love Michael. Am I able to break a drumstick in half? In half? Well, I must tell you, questionnaire, I have broken many drumsticks in half, many times when my power was up and I broke them on many big, great tours when I went to hit the back breathing and go, whoosh, and there was no, no rest of the stick and it flew off and, and I was just hitting air. Um, that's happened a great many times. I can't even count how many times. Yes, I've done that. And, and uh, remind you or to let you know, I don't use the skinny sticks, the seven A's and seven B's or the five A's or five B's. I use two B, the, one of the fattest sticks there, there is, two B nylons, and they go in half just like the rest of them. Um, and yes, I've done that great many countless times. Yes, I have. I can do that. Well, I'd have to give them my own advice, what I followed. To practice, 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 and then practice practicing all your time as a drummer. All your time of anything that you profess to do or try to do or want to do. It only make you better. Invest the time in yourself before you invest the time with the other members in the band and trying to work with the band. When you practice on your own, you develop your vocabulary to express and, and have conversation, musical conversation with the rest of the band. And then you've, you've developed your skills, you know, your, your patterns of rhythm, your, your speed, your intricacies, you know, your, your mixed up expressions of things that you mix to beat up, you know, your power, your finesse, your attitude, you know, your swing, you know, those things are developed in the time of practice, not when you with seven or eight members and trying to play the song, you know, wrong time to practice. I'm sorry. Um, but practice is the most best. It's the best investment you can have in oneself. That's when it, that's the time when you get to discover you, who you are and who you intend to be and want to be as a musician, as an artist, as a creative person. You discover yourself. It's a time of discovery. And I used to practice most of the days of my childhood. I mean, and sometimes I practice for seven, eight hours, you know, break it up two or three hours and go back and play three or four more hours or two more hours and then play another hour or two. So it's, as many times it'd be eight hours a day, you know, sometimes four, sometimes two. It varied from the course of the days of my life my, as my childhood and would, would it permit according to schoolwork and other things. But mostly I skipped and missed a lot of things uh, because I was in the room practicing. One of the rooms in the house, I could commandeer and set my drums up and practice. And I love practicing. I really do because I love discovering what I'm capable of. Practice is the best advice I can give to anybody aspiring to do drums or anything else in their life. Well, you know what? I had fun. This is really cool. I like this question and answer segments. Um, keep them coming. You know, I'll, I have other other moments, and I will do this again. We can share this time together and uh, brother and sisterhood, and and as a family, um, the Foot family. So, um, I love doing it. So, um, I want to thank you for sending in all your questions. I'm um, thanking you for your curiosities about me as a person and human being, as well as an artist and a drummer. I want to thank you for being involved in my career, being interested in my career and my life. You know, it's very, it very means a lot to me because you invest time out of your lives to be interested in me and my life. So it means a lot to me. And um, there's a brother and sisterhood amongst us all. So I wanted to let you know I love you all just like brothers and sisters and that's family. You know, the blood is the blood and I feel it between us because you, you feel me and you feel what I'm doing and I feel you because you're aware of what I'm doing and you're interested in what I'm doing in my life and you care about me. So 
Uh, I love you all for caring about me and um, giving your time to me, to, to share with me and um, participate. I keep the love alive, love one another. All as MJ fans and as any, as fans of drumming and, and as fans of humanity, love one another. There's solutions to everything and no differences. And one more thing. If you please, if you please comment, like, and subscribe, it would mean a lot to me. I really, really appreciate it. God dang it. Come on now. I love you all.